Hey, thanks for joining us. This is your host, James. I'm so glad that you are joining us today, wherever you're from and however you're listening. We would love it if you would share this with your friends. Um, it would really mean a lot to us as just we are trying to share the love and hope that we have in Jesus over the next few weeks um, as we navigate the coronavirus and what that means for us to be the church um, to our community and to the people around us. So thanks for joining us and we'll get started. Well, hey, good morning, Grace Fellowship. Today is Friday, and we are here with the Rise Up podcast again. It is James and Pastor Tim. We are in a new location. We are in a new location. Yeah, changing it up. And we have we have seats that swivel. Yes, which which I will not (laughs) swivel because it may be distracting. You're swiveling now, James. (laughs) You're swiveling without knowing that you're swiveling. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that next week. Normally, I bounce on a ball, so. (laughs) <laughs> that's do. that's my office chair is a ball, so oh, gosh. I'm used to moving. Yes. Anyways. Anyways. Thanks for joining us. We're excited. Can you tell it's been over five? It's, we're going on week six. Yes. I Can need you, people. We we need something. <laughs> yes. <you know? laughs> Which, by the way, and so uh, I'm going to talk about this Sunday morning, uh, but month tomorrow, or excuse me, Monday, Monday, uh, we are going to do a week of mental health issues. Yes. Um, and we'll just see how that goes. Yeah. If we have a response it. to that, if we have a bigger response to that, maybe we'll go longer. But uh, going into six week six, yep. we do feel like, I mean, the, the government is telling us, you know, there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel that we can see, but we still don't know how that's going to work out. And so we're just, you know, every time they post another, you know, stay at home sh- guideline, it's just like, oh. Two more yeah, weeks, yeah. two more weeks, and who knows, you know, what we're going to do next. Um, or the cold weather. Or the Snow. cold weather, yeah. All that. So anyway, I mean, this is, this is, now they're talking about the emotional and mental toll this is taking on. It's not yeah. just the, the physical and the <clears throat> financial. Yeah. But now this is becoming mental and emotional. Yeah. So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about that next week. Yeah, I'm excited the about podcast. it. So I'm, I'm, really I'm looking excited forward to it, too. What do you have for us today? But Ted? today we're going to look at uh, a very popular verse, one of my favorite verses, uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Uh, many of you uh, know that. James, I'm going to have you read that verse if you would. Yes. Verse eleven. Uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. I know the plans I have for you. Um, Here's, here's the problem with that verse. A lot of people, this is like their favorite verse. This is their life verse. Uh, they claim this verse. I've talked about this verse a lot. But I think we often misunderstand or misapply this verse. Because mm-hmm. the very first phrase of that verse says what? For I know the plans I have for you. Whose plans? God's plans. God's plans. See, we, we sometimes use scripture as not so much... Uh, a confirmation of what God's will is for us, but as a blessing or a confirmation on what we want to do with our lives. Mm-hmm. And so I've just I've heard a lot of people quote that verse in the context of, you know, I this is my career or this is my yeah. marriage or this is my whatever it is that we're planning and we want God to to to, to kind of rubber stamp that. Or like something good happens, you know, you post an update on Instagram. For I know the plans I have for you. Yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I you know I've I've mentioned before to understand the text, you've got to see the context yep. in this. And so this actually, verse eleven is actually a part of a letter yep. that Jeremiah wrote uh, to those in Babylonian uh, Babylonian captivity, and um, the, the the Israelites have been carried off into cap- into Babylon, and uh, in verse. One or two, I think it says that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, I can't Nebuchadnezzar. Say Nebuchadnezzar carried them off into exile. Into exile. But later on in that letter, it says that God carried them off. Mm. He says, "I've carried." Them. So which is it? it? Did Nebuchadnezzar do it, or did God do it? And the answer is yes. Both. God has a plan, and God uses people to fulfill that plan. Okay. So it was God's plan uh, for these people to to be in Babylon. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the Israelites were receiving word from different prophets, you know, stay away from these people, isolate from these people, you know, you don't belong to these people, these people don't belong to you. And yet in this letter, 
God, Jeremiah through God through Jeremiah is telling these people, no, you need to settle down in the city. You need to pray for the prosperity of the city. Mm-hmm. You need to work for the well good of the city. Mm-hmm. And then he says, for I know the plans I have for you. Mm-hmm. So this was not necessarily a, a, a verse designed to speak to us individually about our specific, you know, does God, you know, who we marry and what job we take and where we live. God has thoughts about that. Right. And God, you know, is working in those circumstances in our lives. But he, but it's much bigger mm-hmm. than, than that. Mm-hmm. God has a plan for us in his grand scheme of things. And so he's telling the Israelites in this particular passage to settle down in this city um, and to work for the prosperity of this city because God wants to be known even in this city. Mm. We talked about Jonah uh, a couple of episodes ago. Whale of a time. A whale of a time. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He did not. So he did not. And for God a said, I have, for a while. <laughs> God says, I have a plan for you. Yeah, he did. And it's not about your particular happiness or, you know, I have a purpose for your life. And mm-hmm. that is to be it. in the New Testament. It says, you're salt and light. Mm-hmm. It says that you are a city on a hill. Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 said that you are, we are ambassadors for Christ. And so the, the grand scheme that God has for all of us is for us to represent him wherever we are and in whatever circumstance that we're in. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah 29, 11, it's a great verse. I believe that verse. I claim that verse, but I I want to properly apply that verse. And for me, that verse says, whatever circumstance I'm in, wherever I'm at, and whoever I'm with... This is not about me. This is what God has purposed for me in that mm. situation. And with the Israelites in Babylon, God had promised to deliver them after 70 years. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, there's a message of hope. But while you're there, mm-hmm. be salt and light. Mm. So I think the, the thought that I want to leave uh, with us in this particular uh, verse is that given the situation that we're in, uh, you know, what... what what does God have for us? What does God want us to do? What, what is his purpose for us? I believe his overarching purpose is to be salt and light mm-hmm. and to bring hope in whatever situation you're in. Mm-hmm. It's not to get you out of any particular problem. It's not to, to save you from any particular suffering. It's to allow his character and presence to be revealed mm-hmm. in the way that you're handling the situation that you have mm-hmm. in the situation that you're in. So, uh, it's a great verse. Uh, it's yeah. an even greater verse when we understand uh, God's perspective on that verse. Yeah. Any, I, any particular thoughts? Yeah, I have two uh, that really came to mind. Uh, one was, um, uh, the first thing, was Paul, when he wrote most of his letters, exile, by himself. In a prison In cell. a prison, you know, doing right. all these things. Um, one of the things that Tacey and I have done or we've received, we've gotten um, what people are calling happy mail. Um, hmm. instead of a happy meal from McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> we got happy mail. Um, you know, and, and we just had Elliot. So like people are sending us little booties or a onesie or a book or That's something awesome. like that. So it's really cool to see that. Um, we sent, uh, Tacey's family, uh, and nieces and nephews, we just sent them a card and put like a dollar bill in it. So when they open it, it just fall, falls out, you know, it's something happy. Um, yeah, cause what totally. kid doesn't love getting right. mail? Um, and that's what I just, I kind of thought about that, you know, how can we encourage people while we're in exile? Send happy mail. Yeah. Super easy. Absolutely. FaceTime, Zoom, whatever. Um, just be with people when we're not with people. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one way to do that's it. That's awesome. Uh, and the other thing uh, that made me think about, you know, you're talking about praying for the city. I think that's just one thing that we can all be doing mm-hmm. is just continuing to pray for the city, the leaders, us. I mean, we're, we're here um, still doing stuff. Um and just continue to, to pray. I mean, yeah. pray for the city, pray for the prosperity of the city, pray for the growth of the city, um, for the people that are losing their jobs. Mm-hmm. Just continue to pray. Absolutely. You know, pray without ceasing. Yeah. So that's that, those are my thoughts right off yeah, the bat. Yeah, when, when that is on our mind, then we're more willing and able to seize the opportunities that God puts before us to actually be in tangible ways, salt and light. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, if you're not thinking about it, yeah, mm-hmm. not going to do it. Yeah, not to get so... Uh, and I think, again, going back to this passage... Jeremiah, God through Jeremiah was telling these people, don't get hung up on your problem. Yeah. Get hung up on the opportunity that you have. What does this situation make possible? Yeah. And so they have a, they have an opportunity to declare the true God of the universe to the Babylonian, um, the people that they they uh, captured mm-hmm. or they, they were captured by. 
they can and Paul in, in mm-hmm. prison he won he won his guards to yep. the Lord so yeah. yeah there's a song that comes to mind uh, I I don't know it very well it's the open my eyes you open my heart to your eyes or something like that oh yeah yeah open the eyes open the eyes of my heart Lord. yes that one okay we need to shut this back down. <laughs> <laughs> open the I'm eyes not, of my heart yeah that one open the eyes of my heart that's an old song you remember that not really oh, obviously <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it just made me think of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that should be our prayer. That should be our prayer. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks yeah. for joining us today on this Friday. Uh, make sure you check out our services this Sunday. This and, weekend, yes. Yeah, we're excited about that. We got some cool stuff coming up uh, as we start a new series going through Psalm 23 or Psalm the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. Yeah, some people have yeah. referred to it. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm excited. So, hey, check us out. Don't forget, family bingo tonight. Super excited about it. Check out the Absolutely. event. I'm going. Tim's going to be there. I'm hosting it. It's going to be fun. See you guys later. Bye.